Oh, this god-awful song you hear. Well, that, my friends, that is the anthem for our next guest. A proud 2022 Eastern Michigan Hall of Fame inductee, Thomas John Lang. TJ, how are you? Why do you got to throw... <laughs> Why do you got to throw a dagger into it at the beginning before you congratulate somebody? <laughs> Here, is this better? Uh, uh, pip, pip. This is how TJ's taking the stage tonight, along with Autumn Bragg, <laughs> Carrie Gould Hatfield, and Carl Lowe. I don't know who any of those people are, but whatever. Oh, they was, those are real people? Uh, oh, you yes. were making them up. <laughs> also in attendance tonight, Carl Johnson, Amanda Kulikowski, Carl Thomas. And who could forget Morris Ellis, oh, Stacey yeah. Graham. Legends. Oh, or Morris 2018 a- attendee, Virgie Bully will be there. <laughs> oh, Virgie was a blacktop legend. <laughs> Legends. <laughs> Honor to join that class. Uh, he's going right up there in the Hall of Fame with Derek Dials. <laughs> Actually, funny you mention it, wow. 2013, Derek Dial <laughs> and Earl Boykins in attendance. <laughs> Congratulations, TJ. Oh, d- thank you, Rico. Honestly, I appreciate it. Thank you. Rico, it, 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 listen, TJ, it, it does matter. Not it's not like Michigan program, State's you know? putting Rico or I in the Hall of Fame. It matters. Yeah. No, I'm excited. But here's what I don't understand. Yeah. How are they not doing like a, a beautiful uh, either slate gray or dark green blazer with like a crest on it as you're inducted, like the Masters? Uh, budget cuts. <laughs> But he's going to give you a no, green no, cupcake. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, actually, wow. you know what? They just redid their uh, their Hall of Fame over there at the uh, basketball arena, which just got renamed after George Gervin, by the way, in the past, in the recent months, which is uh, that which is awesome. convocation George, anymore. No, it's the George Gervin uh, Center, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, um, you know, he's obviously uh, probably what's our the most, soiree uh, accomplished. tonight. Alumni what are we event. doing? A little strolling apps? Yeah, are we I delivering think, speeches? Um, What's the story? Yeah, I think a little bit of both. I think there's a you know, cocktail hour that starts about six, and then uh, the speeches after that, and a little ceremony, probably just some celebration. And, you know, I've talked to a, a bunch of former teammates that are going and taking my family down. So it uh, should, be, should be a fun evening. Imani Is that Bates. quarterback of yours going to be there? Bobby Boner or whatever his name was? <laughs> See, I, I just thought that Imani Bates would be the presenter. <laughs> Oh man. What the hell was his name? It was like God. Pete Boner. What the hell? Bonet? <laughs> yeah. We had it. a Matt Matt Bonet for a little while. He was yeah. Older. Bonet, Andy Boner, Schmitty. it's all the same. Yeah. Oh yeah, that, yeah. I think uh a good amount of my former teammates will be there, so it'll be good to, good to catch up with a lot this of those all. guys. Don't get to see him too often. It, well will uh who's the quarterback who punched the pit player? Uh, Pete Glass. Oh, that was uh Will he yeah, be there Glass. tonight? Mike Glass. <laughs> no, no, I don't I don't think Mike will be there, unfortunately. I don't have much Walt relationship Church with him. to the main stage. <laughs> All right, so listen. Here's here's my question. Do you have your speech prepared? Um I I'd say I'm about 95% done. And the only Can we thing help I'm, you? Well, the, the, so the only thing I'm working on still is like the ending, right? I, I think I'm trying to find the words to kind of piece together of uh, gratitude, appreciation and then just because they they honestly said it's like, "Ah, keep it to like I think it was like four or five minutes. I'm Thank like, you for coming be, out. God bless. Easy. I'll keep it to two minutes. Thank moments. you for coming out. God bless and good night. Yeah, go. I think and, and go like Hurons. That, yeah, I'm yeah, just, I'm yeah go, go your, Hurons. Bring the Hurons back. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> and bring the Hurons oh, back. And one more thing. <laughs> bring Creighton, the back. Win the Mac or pack your boop and walk off the stage. Now they got a chance. You know, they got a chance this I weekend. Know. I mean, Toledo, that's, uh, that's going to be the battle for first place, I think. And. Man, it would be awesome. I mean, we've been so close the last couple of years under Creighton, and he's he's done a fantastic job taking that program out of the dumps. But uh, no, they got a they got a real legit chance, I think, for the first time in you know maybe five years now to actually control their destiny. So I think Toledo's uh, quarterback, Daquan Finn, might be hurt, TJ. So you might have a real chance. Yeah, and they got. I mean, I was surprised to see them get you know kind of pummeled last week against Buffalo. Wait, I mean, Finn Buffalo's is still there? I t- oh, the Daquan Finn experience, year I, twelve. 
I wow. feel like there's players in the MAC that have been playing <laughs> since 2012, and you're like, how is this yeah. guy still playing? I swear to God, he used <laughs> like, to throw passes to like, Donnie Corley back in the day. Like seven years right. of eligibility <laughs> somehow now. Everybody got the free COVID year and, you know, red shirts and gray shirts and medical oh, red mean, shirts, and it's like, how like how is – I mean, I feel like Rocky Lombardi's been playing football for seven years. And he's still you realize Rocky at, at NIU, and it's like this guy, Rocky's like firstborn son is going into the eighth grade next year <laughs> while he's still it starting seems, at NIU. That's what it right. seems like. I don't know, back then, you could just uh, right, you know, yeah, a couple just, extra so years t- over there. Lou Nichols, I do been have there a, a while, um, too. yeah. No, there's t- a lot of players. TJ, I want I want you, want you to weigh in on this because I know you're a ball breaker and it's exciting. Did you hear our open on your drive in or no? In today's show. Yes. Uh, no, I did not. Okay, so Cliff notes. Like, I think MSU is going to their funeral tomorrow night. I think we're going to get murdered. And Rico has a little bit more hope, a wait-and-see approach. You can't quantify hate. So I had asked the question, am I just being a bad fan? Because, I like, I can't believe State's wearing white tomorrow night. They should be wearing black and should roll in a coffin. <laughs> but, you know, like, I just, am I a bad fan or am I a realistic fan? Mm, I think there's a part of you, Mike, that always kind of hedges your bet, you know, like with Michigan State. I Explain. think you always, if it's a big number, I think you expect them to get whooped. And that way, maybe if they do cover the spread or play a tight game like Rico thinks, then it could be a, it could be a win-win for you, you know? Um, <laughs> Emotionally, <that's> just, yes. <laughs> Emotionally, <laughs> yes. But, like, if we don't win, there is no win. Uh, right. But, no, I know that. But, no, I think um, – Gosh, when you look at it on paper, yeah, it should be... It's brutal. It should be a slaughter. Uh, I think it's very clear that Michigan is just the the way better football team. Um, With that being said, though, you know, I I do kind of lean towards Rico's side a little bit where these these rivalry games, uh, anything can happen. You just don't know. And this is the thing that, you know, Mike, we've talked about a lot. The thing that I admire the most about uh, Michigan State football is their ability to kind of... um, really jump into that underdog role and embrace and, it. Uh, and embrace it and just uh, enjoy um, kind of having that, you know, everybody's nobody believes in us type attitude and, and uh, you know, kind of playing better than they, than, they, than they are, especially in these rivalry games. So I don't know, man. I don't, I don't think that uh, Michigan State has a chance to win this game. But with that being said, you know, I could see them starting off fast. I could see some trick plays. I could see uh, a little bit of that desperation mode just – this season, how this season has played out. Like, this is, I'm not trying to say this in any disrespect, but this is kind of the Super Bowl game for Michigan State. I mean, they're they're in that spoiler role now where, you know, our season's not going well. Well, let, let's go out there and ruin somebody else's season. I do think that it, that is a legit factor, and that's something that, as a Michigan fan, I've actually admired about Michigan State is their ability to, uh, like Rico said, embrace that role of just, you know, nobody's giving us a chance. Nobody believes in us. Let's go in there and, and shock some people and punch them in the mouth and see what happens. Didn't want to step over you, Rico. I thought you had something there. My bad. No, 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 no. TJ was on a roll. Yeah, I mean, no, that, I you know what? You want to know why, Mike? He's all a famer. Well, when you look at it on paper, it's like, yeah. And so is 1996 him. inductee Jim Applegate, <laughs> along with John C. He's got, Fountain. The, he's got the Wiki, Wikipedia page for <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Hotel. James Matthews, John Clay, and who can forget Robert Crosby from the 95 class. <laughs> I'm learning so much. This is great. It's a good history lesson for you. All right, that's totally out of line. Um, no, d- d- TJ, I just think it's it's also a thing where, like, I can't change the type of fan I am. Like, I'm pessimistic by nature. I mean, the Giants are 6-1, and one, and I'm terrified of going and playing the Seahawks this weekend out in Seattle. That's just how I am. So it's like, I, Rico's right. The series is normally close, but here's the difference for me. A, this is the worst offensive line I've ever seen at Michigan State. And B, I actually think this Michigan team, unlike most of their overrated garbage, this team's for real. I think this team could win the whole damn thing. And that's just different than any of these other years maybe since 97 no 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 i'm with you i think that uh you know they they still in my mind are they better than last year's team um maybe i think so maybe i i I just i i can't point at it with the you know 
firm yes and say yes. I think they're better. I still think I think the old yes, line's better. Are, I think they are too, and I think their running game might might just be better with uh, Donovan Edwards starting to emerge a little bit. So See, I think that I think their D line is actually better I, because you it, because you don't know where the pressure is coming. Last year, you know it was going to come off the edge. Now, right. It's kind of that no-name defense, and you don't know who's going to step up and go after the quarterback. Yeah, I get that. And, you know, last year I think they were um, better defensively only because they were allowed to uh, just sit back so much and just rush four guys and get home so much with, with Ajabo and with Hutchinson. This year they've kind of adapted to more of that uh, multiple scheme where, you know, third down, you, you, don't, you don't know where the pressure's coming from. I don't think that they're necessarily as good um, just with a four-man rush as they were last year, but – uh, I do like some of the changes, even that they made in that Penn State game. You know, when Clifford was starting to run the ball and hurt him with his feet, you saw some of those changes in the spy and the pressures um, to not allow him to do that. Like those were the adjustments that I really, really like uh, about this team. But no, I don't think you can. I don't think you can uh, underestimate the the value of uh, or the power of you know that that underdog in this rivalry and that hatred <laughs> that these players. TJ, uh, how much seem does it have. mean though? Like you, you, you lined up, and I'm not. In no, I'm not dissing you at all, brother. It's more you lined up against a lot of guys that had way better physical gifts than you, right? It doesn't like the hatred only carries you so far, though, before it's snap 38, snap 56, snap 72. Like as a player, that that dissipates. No, um, it might. I mean, depending on how the game, uh, you know, plays out, but. You know, I think when, when you look at both of these teams, especially coming off the bye, I mean, how much different do you think Michigan is going to look? I don't think they've been forced to make any changes. I've been, I think they've been Good winning point. games so easily that they're yeah. just saying, no, we're, we don't need to change anything. We need to stay healthy. State will look keep different the because they'll have more exactly. bodies to put on the but, field. And there's so gonna, that'll help. Right. And not only are they getting a little bit healthier, but they, you know, there's going to be, I guarantee you, you know, maybe the first third down or somewhere in the first series defensively. There's going to be some crazy exotic look where, you know, there's some pressure that you, you haven't seen all season from this team. And on the flip side, I think offensively, you know, Michigan State's probably going to roll out, you know, a couple trick plays early in the game. They might roll out a fake I mean, yeah, punt, Harbaugh's a fake already said. Yeah, you they're, know, they're preparing for the fake play exactly, from the trick play. Yeah. Exactly. And that's why I think that, you know, there is a little bit of that element this weekend where – I think Michigan's going to have to prepare for more of the unknowns and the unscouted looks that Michigan State's going to provide than than the flip side because I think Michigan is just, you know, in a, you call it you know a little bit of arrogance, whatever. But their mindset is just no, we're just going to keep doing what we're doing and and try to stop yep. us, you know. And I think that do you want your question? I think there's an element to that where you know that's why I think there might be a chance not for Michigan State to not. I don't see a path to, to them or for them to win this game. But I do see a path for them to maybe come out early, you know, punch him in the mouth a little bit, and and make JJ throw the ball uh, more than they want to, and and that's going to be a that's a big question for me still. Is JJ a guy see, that I can see. sit back, throw the ball thirty times, and and go win you a game? I see a clear pathway to me getting drunk tomorrow night. Um, <laughs> let me let me just throw this out there. I wanted to ask you this. This is your critical question of the week, and I'm being dead serious when I say this. I was thinking about this. If I stuffed you into a uniform and a helmet tomorrow night, no training, this is you right now. Like if I just stuffed you into some walk-ons jersey and we did like a LaDainian Tomlinson face shield so nobody could see it was you, do you think you could go out and play high-level football tomorrow night this is like Eli Manning. against Michigan? <laughs> sort of. Uh, no. Because I, I asked TJ this question the other day where I said, hey, man, because we were just joking around, Rico, and we were um, when I was doing the show on that Friday a few weeks ago, and I said, buddy, I go, like, do you think you could do one functional snap on a Sunday afternoon right now? And, TJ, you were like, oh, God, no. And I, I so I was thinking, I'm going, what about high college? You know how they always say the best college team would lose by four touchdowns to the worst NFL team? Right. Like, could you line up tomorrow night against Maisie Smith? And 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 be you, or do you think you would disintegrate? No, I think I would probably get hurt, maybe three snaps into it. <laughs> really? I, I think either a blown hamstring or <laughs> a broken back, or you know, I, t- <laughs> oh my God. I tell people if I played ten snaps, uh, you'd probably see seven holding calls, uh, two false starts. You fit right in with our line and a Who blown hammy. Walk that's on, what, that's what you would Dude, see. Dude, honestly, I was thinking about putting like a, a Raleigh Fingers mustache on his face and like a, 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 a an Oakley face shield, and we just get him in there. 
<laughs> and I'm like, maybe that could help us. And now my nightmare is true. TJ would not be able to hold up for seven or eight snaps. <laughs> You're like a dark, dark uh, spray tan, like uh, some Polynesian kid. Well, you know what, Mike? Over. Mike could get fake tats. No you could have full is. sleeves on both arms. <laughs> hey, Mike, you, while you're at it, you, why don't you get another fake mustache? Because I heard that uh, Dennis Walker may be available if you fly him back yeah. out to Seattle <laughs> the next day. Anybody see it? Is, is Plaxico busy? <laughs> hey, Dennis. Wow, you want to wear number nine? Go ahead. <laughs> All right, here's what I do want to do, though, Rico. Yeah. I, I want to ask TJ the thing you and I talked about Lions-related before the show. I oh. want to, before I poison the jury, I want to see what TJ thinks about it. We'll do it next. We'll get to the picks. Also, shout out to uh, 2017 inductees Leela Nelson and Tiberia Patterson also will be at the event tonight. Very exciting. <laughs> Very exciting. <laughs> I just wonder where our invite was. 